guys it's madison welcome back to my channel so i'm starting a new wig series on my channel where i show you guys everything you need to know about wigs so i decided to start by showing you guys how to make a wig um the hair is from icy hair and i'll be making the wig on a sewing machine for the first time ever um i usually hand sew my wigs but i wanted to try the sewing machine method today but don't worry if you don't have a sewing machine i'll show you guys how you can um hand sew the wig. So we're going to start off by placing the frontal on our wig cap. Um, make sure you pull that hairline about a half an inch to an inch above the edge of the cap as you see because you want to imagine the, the edge of the cap as your actual hairline and you know how you place the frontal over your um, hairline. You never place it directly on your hairline so that's why you want to push it all the way front. So when placing your frontal, you don't want to pull it back like you just saw me do. You want to make sure that it's just going straight down. You'll have some excess on the bottom, but you know, that's how you, you cut it off when you put the wig on. How you cut the ear tabs off, that's the ear tab part. So it's okay to have extra length um, hanging over. So you want to make sure that when your frontal's all pinned up, you want that little M shape as you see um, the lace making. If you have that M shape, then you know that that sorry if you have the m shape then you know that you laid it down correctly and if it's straight so when you have it all pinned down you can get your sharpie and you can start tracing out your um, frontal because we will be sewing that on last Okay, so now we're going to start making our lines on the wig and we're just going to go straight across and leave about a finger width apart. My lines were trash on this um, cap. Like I ended up redoing it the same way. Just I just made sure that I made the lines straighter. So I'll try to make the lines as straight as possible. This is my first time doing this um, method. Um, I usually hand sew my wigs, um, but yeah, if you're a beginner, it's great to do this method because it just helps you, you know, stay on track if you make the line straight. Make sure you make the line straight. So you just do that all across the wig. Um, my head is bigger, so I'll have more lines than um, a lot of people. If you have like a smaller head, then you'll have less lines, um, but this is going to be our foundation when we're... Um, sewing the tracks on and don't worry I'll show you guys towards the end of the video how you can hand sew the um, tracks on if you don't want to use the machine so as you get to the top of the head it'll start to make a u-shape and I end up making one extra u-shape but I ended up crossing it out I hope this doesn't confuse you guys um, I ended up fixing it with the gold marker so I can you know try and you know help you guys see the difference but after you get your last u shape you want to do about four lines across um just straight across um the u as you see so after you have all your lines drawn um it's time to start sewing the tracks on the wig up so this is the thread i'm using for the sewing machine it's an all-purpose um 100 polyester black thread you can get it at your local craft store or like walmart so for threading the machine you want to make sure you have your bobbin right there that's a bobbin you want to make sure you have your bobbin threaded so you want to put it on and then just follow the instructions of the machine if you have a machine it should come with instructions but i still tried to show you guys real quick how to do it i just did not i did not want to make this video too long um but you put it through that hook and then there's a hook in the back that you latch it through and then you wrap it around that little silver piece right there you just wrap it around you don't wrap it around completely and then you pull it all the way over to the bobbin wrap it around like four to five times cut it and then i'm gonna push it towards that little silver part and then press the go button and it'll start winding my bobbin and yeah so I know how to operate a sewing machine because I took a sewing machine class in high school and they taught us how to use it and we made clothes and everything, but it's easy. You just got to take some practice, take some time out to um, practice using it. 
So when you're done with your bobbin, you put it under the machine. It's hard for me to do with my nails. That's why I just scooted in with my nails. So after you do that, you wanna make sure it's going in the right direction and then um, follow that little outline that's right there as you see me doing. Just follow the outline. And then when you're done, you cut it and you put the case back over it. And then you're done with that part. And now it's time to thread the machine. So you wanna keep the first two steps of putting it under that silver piece and then the back of the machine. And then you wanna bring it all the way down. And then bring it back up through the second part. And then there's a little hook in there. You wanna make sure it hooks on that part and then bring it back down and the same thing. And then there's this little section where you see the six at. There's a little section you want to make sure you hook it in there and that it's hooked all the way in. And then go up and around. Now this machine threads itself. Um, but if you don't have a machine that threads itself, after the six part, you'll just stick the, um, the thread through the needle, which is super easy. Like that. And it should look like that and then you're ready to start sewing. So these are the settings I sewed the um, wig on. So this button right here is the reverse stitch. You'll be doing the reverse stitch when you first start sewing and then when you end it, it'll just lock the stitch in. And then my tension is on four, that's the tension wheel. So we're gonna start off by doubling the webs. This is optional. If you don't wanna double your webs, you don't have to. Um, but I wanted to do it because I was trying to fit all four bundles in, but I ended up not being able to do that. So that thing you saw me lift um, was the presser foot. So that's the presser foot that keeps everything, you know, down. It just pushes the fabric or the tracks or whatever you're using down so everything can, you know, stay in place. Um, so this is me um, doubling the tracks. This was hard to film. I try to get a good view for you guys, but you know, it, it's not the best view. I'm still working on it. Give me, give me a little time. But um, I'm using that zigzag motion. I'm not um, stacking the webs on top of each other. They're just right under each other. And then this is me sewing on the track for the first time, but I messed up. And I wanted to show you guys that I messed up. I did not follow the line because everything just blended in. Um, so I had to fix that. It's okay, you're gonna mess up, especially if it's your first time, but you can just go back and fix it. So I messed up because the tracks were blending in with the cap and everything, and I didn't, I couldn't see where the tracks are. So I just decided to um, color the tracks with the gold Sharpie, and that made everything so much easier. So here's a little bit more close up of what it should look like. As you see, the presser foot is right on top of the track and then I'm just gonna hit that zigzag setting and then I'm gonna do the first stitch and then I'm gonna reverse stitch and then after I reverse stitch we're just gonna feed in the cap towards you know towards the back and you just want to make sure you take your time um, it's not gonna go by quick your first time because this took me a minute Took me over an hour because I just want to make sure everything was neat and perfect on the lines. But as long as you, you know, keep your track on top of the lines that you drew, then everything will be okay. And make sure that your cap is not folded under. And also, oh yeah, major thing, don't stretch out your cap when you're sewing it. You don't see me pulling the cap um, as I sew because if you pull the cap out, it's going to like lose the stretch in the cap if that makes sense and you want to keep that um, stretch especially if you're making it for someone else because everyone has different head sizes so this is how it looks after i finish those u parts um and i'm going with the 22 inch bundle i did not double track these because i knew it was going to be going on the top four lines that i did and i just wanted to make sure that it was going to be flat so i just you know backtracked not backtracked what is it called? Reverse stitch. I reverse stitched and then I went in and sewed it all the way across and when I end it, I reverse stitched again to lock it in and I cut the tracks and then this is how the wig looks. 
And then this is how the wig turned out before I sewed on the frontal, which I'll show you guys how I sewed it on. Very, very full. I did not fit all four tracks in at all. All four bundles, my bad. So after you're done, you want to make sure you put the frontal back on. Make sure everything's lined up. And then you want to get your C-curve needle or your straight needle if you want. And I'm using the same exact thread that I sewed the um, tracks on with. And then we're just going to start sewing the frontal on the um, wig cap. And I'll show you a little bit closer um, of how you sew this on. So as you see, I'm doing like an overhand sew um, motion. Um, you can do underhand, whichever one works best for you. I like doing overhand for the frontal part. I don't know why. I just feel like it's more secure. And then I just wrap the thread around the um, needle part and pull it through. As you see, I twist it like that. This is how I get the knot. I twist it and then I grab the end of the needle and pull it through. And that's how you create that little loop knot thing so it can stay secure. And then you cut it and then every time you end off like a track or your front so you cut it and then you always tie it about two to three times to be sure that it's secure. So here I'm showing you guys how to sew a track on by hand if you don't have a sewing machine. So you want to get your thread. Um, I use weaving thread that you get from Beauty Supply if I hand sew a track um, on a wig. And um, it's a bit thicker. So you thread your needle. So you start it off by putting it through the um, weft and then wrap the thread around two times as you see me do and then pull it. So that's securing it since you're starting it off with that. So after you um, pull it through the webs, you can start just sewing under the track. Like I said, I like sewing my tracks under and my front tools overhand. Um, you don't have to go through the webs every single time. I just start off by going through the webs and then end it off by going through the webs. But yeah, it's real simple. I do the same hand motions as I did with the um, front tool. And yeah, it's pretty simple. So when you end the track, you're going to see me um, put the needle through the weft and then under the cap. And then we're going to twist it and pull it through. And then I'm going to cut it off and then um, do the two knots, two to three knots, just to secure it. And yeah, so if you're not using this one machine, just do what I did by, um, you saw how I pinned the track up to keep it on the straight line and everything would be great. I'm telling you guys, it's not that hard to hand sew. It's very easy to hand sew. It just takes a lot of time. So when you're all done with the wig, you get that cap that's underneath the frontal and cut that part off, but you don't want to cut too close to where you sewed. Um, so is that, a, is that correct grammar? <laughs> You don't want to cut too close to where you know sew the frontal on because when you want to change your frontal you don't want the wig to fall apart um so yeah so this is what the wig looked like after i got done sewing everything um very very full very very cute um that's what the hairline looked like and then that's what the tracks looked like sewed on this wig was super super flat guys i loved making it on the sewing machine and this is what it looked like after i customized it so in the next video, I'll be showing you guys how I customized it, how I plucked the hairline, and how I bleached the knot. So be sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you can be the first to see how I plucked it. Because I plucked this wig really good, actually. I was kind of surprised. But yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to give it a big thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.